and welcome back to Angela's Amateur Cooking Hour. Today I have decided I am going to do plant-based ice cream uh, cake. You heard that right. I'm going to make cake out of ice cream, not an ice cream cake. Um, my ingredients that I am using, you have to do at room temperature. I am using this, a whole pint, not half of it, not a quarter. I'm doing all of it. Stick all the pint into a mixing. Get all the caramel that you can in here. This is going to be a salted almond sea salt caramel cake. Okay. Got to make sure that all of this is at room temperature. and ready to go. And if, is it, if this is not at room temperature, you can just put it for a few seconds in the microwave until it's just pliable enough. Then you can add self-rising flour to it. I might just do that right now. But I'll just put that in the microwave. So this is that's what it looks like. So you can stir this because it looks pretty good. Okay, might have to put it back in for a few seconds. And caramel is very, very good at this point. Um, Because at this point, I wouldn't put the flour in just yet. Just wait for it's a little bit liquidy. Okay, now this is what you want, like this. Now, if you're going to use uh, self rising flour, do not put any dry active yeast in it. Those two should not be put together. Okay. Now that's all put together. Um, I don't like using measuring spoons or measuring cups, so I just go by sight. So I'm just putting, might be at least, if you think about, maybe one and a half cups. If that's what you want to think about it as. And there's no eggs required um, with this cake. There's no butter required. You just use the ice cream and self-rising flour and mix them all together until the consistency is a lot like um, pancake mix. So 
might just use my um, mixing. You can use your hands and you can use your, your mixer if you choose to do so. Now, I have already pre-made my icing that I had. Um, so with my icing, I use plant-based butter. And then I use some uh, macadamia milk for that. And then, and maybe a little bit of sugar. And I just mix it together until it becomes, uh, you get peaks for that. And just recently, I decided to use lactose-free, as I'll show you here. I used my Trader Joe's lactose-free, gluten-free marshmallows. So I melted this together. I used Starbucks coffee uh, from the K-Pods. And then I mixed that in after all of the marshmallows and the butter were together and I mixed that all together and then I kind of kind of like um, a flan I guess you can uh, mix in the coffee and then the coffee starts turning into uh, uh, I'm trying to think um, it starts turning into a caramel mix and so then afterwards you can add a little bit of milk into your um, Okay, I think this might actually be good. And this is what the consistency looks like. So, and it looks like cake batter. And then I need to get my pan. Now you can use an eight inch pan. And then if you have parchment paper, put that in there and then put some uh, cooking spray on top of that. I don't have any of that, so mine will just go directly inside of the pan with sprayed cooking spray on it. And then I say about preheat the oven for maybe 30 minutes or 25 minutes for preheat at, um, I say about 350 to 400 degrees. So I should invest in some parchment paper. I use this for my canola. I need to start getting some more. Okay. And then I better preheat my oven. So about maybe. And the temperature of your oven depends on what the altitude is that you're at. It can be 350 or it can be 400. It, you know, it all depends on your location. And so I'm going to put this in here. Let's see, let me taste how that is. That's really, really good. I might add a little bit of milk. You can use cream cheese if you decide to. Pardon me. My battery's getting low and I need to get my charger. My apologies, I am back from my phone charger. I'm charge this just a moment. Because this is the consistency. But I'm going to be adding just a little bit of milk in there just to even it out. Just a tab. Okay, put that together. It's kind of difficult with the charger. So, turn this on. Well, my oven is preheating at the moment, so I'm going to be adding a little bit of uh, lactose-free milk. 
I apologize. My phone is not being very happy right now with my charging it and the battery. Great. Okay, there we go. Okay, the milk I am using is Milk of Macadamia Latte. Very good stuff. Now I'm just going to add a, a, a little bit of um, little bit of milk, and then mix it up again. All right, because you don't want it too thick. Let's see, because the consistency needs to be like cake batter. If not, it will be our. Um, Okay, here we go. It's not so tight, so then it won't rise very well. So, just gotta stir and stir. If you hear music in the background, that's my Uncle Clay's music. Um, he passed away last year, and so I play that while I'm cooking. Okay. That looks so much better. It looks like pancake batter now. Okay. And then I'll just pour all of this into my cake, my eight inch cake pan. And it looks like this. Okay, that's better. Now if you choose, you can add just a, a pinch, like a half a teaspoon of sugar. It doesn't need any more salt. Because you don't want to be too sweet because then you're going to... There we go. Just a little bit like that. Just a sprinkle. Feel free to experiment. Add strawberries to it, any type of fruit flavors, anything like that. I don't have any fruit at the moment. I had strawberry cake last time. Okay, this looks wonderful. Alrighty. And it looks like this consistency. Because there's people who do make ice cream cakes. I don't make ice cream cakes, I make cakes out of ice cream. That's what I do. All right, here we go. Yeah, I get to watch it go in there. Okay. Put that in there. And you bake this cake for about maybe 35 minutes, but check on it to make sure you don't burn it. And if it separates from the side and it comes out clean off of your um, your toothpicks, then take it out and let it sit for a little bit. Okay. Getting some good stuff off of here. all of it here and if you can't get all of it maybe some of the kids if you have any or even your big kid in your household can lick the rest of it that was always my favorite thing to do mm, yes okay now smooth it out I'll show you what it looks like here in a moment of course, my batter being low, maybe not, but it just depends here. Let me smooth it out. All right, that looks so good. Let's get a little bit more caramel that's in here and drizzle it on top. Yeah, that's gonna be really, really good. Now, if you have honey, you can put honey in it, too. Just your taste buds and your preferences and everything else that you choose to do, that's up to you. 
So I try to do little designs on it if I have to. Um, let me see if I can put anything um, in there. You can use sour cream if you choose, but I'm not sure how it will change the cake consistency. I'll bring the cake uh, icing out. Okay, I need to put this in the oven, but I will show you what it looks like before it goes in the oven. It looks like this. So you can see, I kind of did a little bit of a leaf design in my cake. So, now let's see if I can get this back up here. my phone again here trying to get it to stay okay there we go better <laughs> Oops. okay but here goes the cake in the in the oven sorry um here all right let that bake I set the timer for about 35 minutes but with the icing though let my icing, you now, I did use, oh no, <laughs> accidents happen I guess, um, now the icing looks like this when you put it together, it kind of looks like the color of the cake, there we go, and then, that was my mixture that I had done, that was the marshmallows, my icing that I had done um, in that size and then just mix it all together until you get peaks and then once you get the marshmallows you let that sit for just a little bit don't let it sit on the oven too long because it will burn and you don't want burnt marshmallows into your icing so you fold the icing into the marshmallows until they get an even um, it kind of tastes like if you put the coffee in, for me, it's a Starbucks caramel. It comes from my Keurig machine right over here. And you can pour that in there and then it kind of gets a little bit caramely flavor. And so then you let it do that and then you have this caramel flavor for your icing. And then you can put it in the fridge for a few, for about an hour maybe and then mix it together, then it kind of tastes like tapioca pudding. And uh, it's good to put on cakes. So we'll just wait and see how it comes out. So we just have about 30 more minutes left until we can put that on there. All right, let's wait. Okay, my baking aficionados. Um, cake looks done. I will show you what the finished product looks like. That's the cake. It looks really good. It's golden brown. I'm just letting it cool down for a little bit before I put the icing on. So I'll let it sit for maybe about 15, 20 minutes so it cools down. Alrighty, cake's cool. Now it's time to flip the cake and put it on the plate. Easier said than done with one hand. So let's flip it. It easily comes out. We'll just flip, 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 flip. I need to put this down so I can flip it. <laughs> All right, can't see my face, but let's go flip it. Turn it over again. See? No stick. Now I need to flip the cake over again. Alright. Cake looks wonderful. It's time to ice. Okay. Time to ice the cake. 
There's my icing. It's very, very good. Now let's just pour it on there. And just let it work its way down. I know some will cut the top off and the sides. I might do that later, but not while I'm icing the top. I like eating all my cake. I don't like wasting any of it. So. A lot of this cake I can't eat myself. Um, eat by myself, I should say. Because I have a strict dietary um, plan that I have to stick to. I had the gastric bypass two years ago. I lost a lot of weight. So I got this a lot of excess left from when I had it. Yeah, so I still make my cakes, but I will cut my cake pieces into little, like, cheese size squares, or little triangles, but yay big, so, just something to think about. You can share it with everybody, or just eat one piece of cake per day, if that's possible, because everything I make is egg-free, lactose-free. Not always gluten free. This cake today is not gluten free because I use gluten flour. But on a normal basis, I will eat a little bit of gluten just to help my digestion. Okay. And I'm going to use the rest of my icing here. Watch it go all on the cake. It's kind of like painting. You gotta let the first layer of paint dry before you put the second layer on before it makes it look good. So, if you don't, it'll make it look opaque. Okay, time to start spreading the second layer. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I will share this cake tomorrow with my family. This will be my last video until because I have prior family obligations so this will be it'll be a while before I do another one but once I do I get back to doing it I will use mine because I might do other things so we'll see okay the cake is perfectly coated and now I will show you the finished result, the perfectly finished result before I cut a piece, um, before I eat it. Okay, now let's get to that piece of cake so you can see what it looks like. Alright, here's the finished result. And if you decide to try this, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And um, this is Angela's Cooking Hour. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thanks. We'll see you later. Bye.